Hello everybody, my name is Akash Thakar and I am the sound designer for Hyperlight Drifter. So today we're going to do part two of our Sound of Hyperlight Drifter video series. And this is going to coincide with the preview event that we are doing where some backers will be able to play the game ahead of time. And what I'm going to do is give you a quick tour of just some of the sound effects that you're going to be hearing inside this preview build. So what I'm going to show you first is this railgun effect that you might be hearing in the game. It's one of the weapons that we have. So there are a lot of sound effects that you can see here. And just so you know, this is in Logic Pro X for the Mac. And as you can see that each of these sound effects is built up of many, many layers. So for this sound, railgun draw, SND, railgun draw, you can see that just this railgun draw sound is made up of three separate sound effects that are all playing at once. And that's really common in the sound design world to take a bunch of sound effects, process them, edit them, make them your own, and then layer them together so that you have something really unique. So what I'll do is play each of these layers for this railgun draw individually. And this is the sound that plays when the drifter basically pulls out his railgun. And then I'll play them all together for you so you can hear how they sound separately and how they sound together and how they'll sound in the preview build. So I'll just play this one. And next. And now layer three. So now I'll play them all together and you'll hear how they all kind of combine into a new sound. So it's pretty simple, just uh, adding a bunch of sounds together sometimes can yield unexpected results. And oftentimes I do kind of try throwing random stuff together to see what works. There's a lot of processing involved and I will go into that a little bit in some other sound effects. So we'll scroll down here and what I'll want to show you actually is the railgun being fired. And cause you know, gun sound effects are super fun. So we might as well talk about how that all works. So this is the railgun actually being shot. So if I just play each of these layers individually again. So this first layer is just an amalgamation of me slamming a door shut and recording a humming fluorescent light and a whole bunch of other stuff that I can't even remember now. And it already sounds kind of like a cool sci-fi gun at this point but I want to add some more flavor to it. So I added two more layers to the fire sound and I'll play those for you. Bit of an electric buzz, kind of weird um, phasing issues going on there, which is intentional to make it sound a little more sci-fi and a little more part of the Hyperlight Drifter world. And now this third layer. A nice punchy, hit something really bassy that can give more impact to the weapon that we're firing. So all three of these together turn into the railgun fire effect. Alone they may work, um, but adding all three together is what makes sound effects sound unique and makes them sound a part of a certain world, whatever it may be. So I'll just play this again together for you. And now I'm going to get rid of this bassy punch and you, you'll probably hear the difference. It's really nice to have that. And you can see I'm clipping here and usually I, you know, adjust the volumes, but for the purposes of this video, do not worry about that. And I also created a second variation of the fire effect. So when you're firing a gun a whole bunch of times, you don't want to hear the same sound effect over and over and over again. So I just made a different variation of the same sound effect. So I'll just play the layers individually again. <laughs> Similar idea, oven doors, lights being recorded, whole bunch of impacts, recording weird humming. My speakers hum when I set my hard drives too close to them, so I record that. All sorts of good stuff. Second layer. Again, a similar electric-y buzz, and at this point I can't even remember where I initially recorded some of these sound effects. But I do go outfield recording quite often, and if you watch my 
part one of this video series, you'll see that I'm using a wire recorder to record all these sound effects so it sounds distorted and kind of strange. And lastly, our third layer. Again, a bassy punch, and that really helps make the gun sound a lot more menacing and a lot more powerful. So I'm just gonna play all these together for you. So now we have two variations on the same sound, so I'll just play these back to back for you. Let's play this one. You can hear the differences, but it's not so gigantic that you wouldn't be able to tell it's from the same gun. Now, lastly, I'm going to show you... Actually, I'll show you two more effects. I will show you the enemy warp sound effect here. So let's zoom in on that. And here's the interesting thing, and this happens a lot in video game and film sound design. So initially, we wanted to... Or I started making this as an enemy warping in sound effect the sound effect that plays when enemies kind of appear or teleport into the scene. But instead, it actually turned out that we liked it a lot more as a level up sound. So that kind of worked out. It was strange that um, it got repurposed, but that's really, really common. These repurposing of sound effects happen all the time where you think, you know what, this would actually work better somewhere else. And that's what happened here. We're using it as a level up sound in this case. Now, this is all subject to change. You may hear none of these sound effects in the final version of the game. We're always iterating. We're always working to make it as good as humanly possible. But I'll play what I have for you here. So this is the enemy warp in sound effect, then changed to the level up effect. Now there are our five layers uh, associated with the sound effect. So I'll go over them again really quickly. So there's a lot going on here, but it's built up of very, very simple elements that come together and have a nice, impactful sound. So uh, this layer in is probably the most interesting, this simple little metallic twinging sound we have here. Kind of a bell, sci-fi bell sort of sound. Um, this actually comes from this uh, sound effect that I modified. So I took this effect that I'm highlighting here and modified it so it sounds like this. Now, what this was originally is a friend and I took one of my microphones, hooked it up to a stethoscope through a hose spigot, which is super fun to do, and processed it into what you hear here. So I'm just gonna turn off the effects processing that I have on this sound effect and you'll hear what it, almost what it originally was. So that is me and my friend recording my freezer, just being a freezer with a stethoscope and a microphone attached to it. So turning that into what you hear here uh, came about through working with some plugins, namely the EOS Reverb plugin, which I really, really like and Absinthe, which is one of my favorite Native Instruments plugins of all time. So, so good. Really, really useful for getting crazy drones, sound effects, and instruments. So combining all that together, I took this and just exported it into this layer. So from a fridge humming, or a freezer humming, we got to this. Then from there, I took some really simple impact sounds, maybe recorded myself banging on a table, layered that a few times, and then cut it up, processed it using a bit crusher, like you can see here, to give it kind of a distorted, crunchy, gross, but impactful sound. Then these two layers are actually the sound of glass shattering, just really, really light glass just with reverb on it, basically. So I took glass shattering, put this EOS reverb on it by audio damage, and then there we go. This one uh, turned out a little bit interesting when I just play it here. You hear it kind of has this whoosh whip sort of sound to it. The original sound effect didn't really have that sound to it, which I found interesting. I just was playing around with the reverb and eventually that kind of came up maybe as an artifact of all the processing I did to it, I'm not sure, but I ended up really, really liking it, so it was a happy accident. And this here, 
this last one is just a whoosh that you can record by and just a whoosh that in this case i <laughs> took a broiler pan and just whooshed it by a microphone so it get kind of a whoosh build up and processed it sh uh, shrinked it and raised the volume of it quite a lot i also took a sock and kind of balled it up and whooshed it by my microphone and added a uh, the static of a TV when it's not on the right channel underneath it, so you get kind of a staticky whoosh sound in the end. Added some bit crushing and some reverb to it, and then all these layers together ended up creating this. And lastly, some of you guys asked me about workflow, working with animations, all that sort of good stuff. So I will show you that really quickly here as a last sound effect. So what I'm going to show you is sound effects for something called the module pillar. So just go here and all right, cool. So we have the module pillar, which I will show you a video of right here. And I'll just play the sound effect for you and you can see the video coincide with it. And I'll play that again for you. So often when working with timed animations like this, it's really, really common to basically ask for a video of the animation or just take uh, one of the GIFs that we're working on and export it as a video in Photoshop, import it into Logic here, and then start working with it. So I set it up, I imported it into Logic, and then started again building layers to it. Now, I'll just play through them again individually really quickly. So we have a whole bunch of stuff working together to create this. So a lot of simple elements come together and create more complicated sound effects. And you'll notice here that these two regions don't look like the rest. They don't look like audio. And that's because I'm actually using uh, an instrument, an instrument track to create that sound effect. And I'm using Omnisphere for that, which is an incredible, amazing, super powerful synthesizer, sampler, hybrid machine that's just incredible and comes with all these crazy sound effects and instruments. So I use that in conjunction with a whole bunch of sound effects that I had recorded before, I had processed, and then basically make it up as I go. Honestly, half the time, I don't know what I'm gonna end up with, and I end up deleting a lot of stuff that comes out. I never, almost never nail it on the first try. There's a lot of trial and error that comes with making all these sound effects, which is kind of the fun part, because you never really know where you're gonna end up. So after I take these and just export them, I put them up in our shared Dropbox, and then it's up to the rest of the team to start implementing them into the game. So that's it for a quick tour of the sound effects that I'm currently working on for Hyperlight Drifter, and I can't wait to show you more in future videos. And for those of you who are in the preview event, I hope you enjoy the game and let me know your thoughts on the sound design. If you hear anything you really, really like, please feel free to let me know. All right, guys, I will see you later.